A guy named Norman Bates woke up and immediately realized something was wrong. He panicked and began calling for his mother, but she didn't respond. In the garage, Norman found his father lifeless and started searching for the mother again. Guessing that she was in the shower, he knocked on the door. When Norma opened it and heard that her husband was lying lifeless on the floor, she reacted completely calmly. Norman was crying, leaning over his father while Norma acted as if nothing had happened. Now she was only concerned about her son, not her husband. Hugging Norman, the mother said how sorry she was. Six months later, the mother and son moved to Oregon, to the quiet town of White Pine Bay, to start fresh. In their new place, Norma planned to open a motel and run her own business with the 17-year-old son. Norma bought both the house and the motel on the cheap. Of course the house needed some repairs, but that was just a small thing. Norma was full of enthusiasm and believed that here, she and her son would find happiness after all they had been through. Until late in the evening, Norman was carrying luggage from the car to the house. Soon the guy was getting ready to attend the new school for the first time. At the bus stop, a group of girls approached him to get acquainted. The girls were very friendly and offered to give Norman a ride in an expensive car. Bradley Martin, the most beautiful of the girls, took a selfie with him and said he could always turn to her for help. Miss Watson, the literature teacher, asked Norman to stay after class. She was surprised that he had excelled in all his exams but his daily grades were much lower. Norman's explanation was that he and his mother were constantly moving. Miss Watson advised Norman to make new friends and perhaps join a club or activity. She also knew that Norman had recently lost his father and expressed her willingness to offer support at any time. After these words, the guy hurried to leave. Norma was unhappy that the son came home late. Dinner had already gone cold. Norman said he signed up for track and field at the teacher's initiative. It required his mother's signature for him to join the team. Norma wasn't happy to hear this because she had been counting on her son's help. She wouldn't be able to manage the motel on her own. Norman was ready to give up joining the team to avoid upsetting his mother. But she said it was okay and signed the form. The next day, Norman was approached by a man who was clearly in an aggressive mood. Hearing a stranger's voice, Norma came out and asked how she could help. The infuriated man introducing himself as Keith Summers, stated that this house and motel had previously belonged to his family. Norma was aware of this. She also knew that the bank had repossessed the property from the Summers family due to debts. Keith began shouting that he was the master here. At that moment, Norma's patience ran out. She ordered Keith to leave her property and never return. Keith was furious but eventually left. Norman had a feeling that this wouldn't be the last time they saw this man. In the evening, the doorbell rang. Neither the mother nor the son were expecting anyone. Norma opened the door and saw Bradley Martin and the other girls. They introduced themselves as Norman's school friends and wanted to invite him to the library to study. Norman didn't mind going, but the mother didn't let him go, reasoning that they hadn't finished unpacking all their things yet. When the girls left, Norman began yelling at his mother who never gave him any freedom. Norman wants to make new acquaintances and leave the past behind, but the mother always keeps him close to her. They had a quarrel, and Norman locked himself in his room. Of course he wasn't going to listen to the mother and sent a message to Bradley asking to wait for him at the bus stop. Sneaking out through the window, Norman joined the girls. Naturally they didn't go to the library but to a party. Norman found himself in such a place for the first time and clearly felt uncomfortable. The young people were having fun and drinking alcohol. Norman kept to himself, unsure of how to behave. At the same time he couldn't take his eyes off Bradley. She knew at once that he was different. Before Norman was ashamed of his strangeness, but with Bradley he could be himself. They felt a mutual desire to kiss, but they were interrupted by Richard, Bradley's boyfriend. As she left with Richard, Norman felt disappointed. Meanwhile Norma was washing the dishes. Suddenly strange sounds were heard. Norma approached the front door to make sure no one was there. However a few seconds later, the sounds repeated. When Norma approached the door again, she saw Keith Summers who had broken the glass and entered the house. Norma grabbed a sharp object from the kitchen and screamed desperately, calling for Norman. But she didn't know that her son was far away. Of course Keith proved to be stronger. He claimed that this house and everything in it belonged to him. Keith committed unacceptable actions towards Norma. Fortunately Norman returned and knocked Keith out. Barely keeping her composure, Norma asked her son to fetch the first aid kit, which was on the shelf in the bathroom. At that moment, Keith regained consciousness and began mocking Norma. Unable to stand it, she took his life. Norman witnessed this. He had intended to call 911, as it was self-defense, but Norma didn't think it was a good idea. If they called the police, everyone would find out what had happened here. After such an incident, hardly anyone would want to stay at their motel. That's why to protect their reputation, Norma intended to get rid of the evidence. Feeling guilty towards his mother, Norman eventually agreed with her. The mother and son carried lifeless Keith from the house to the motel and placed him in the bathtub. 
Now they have to decide what to do next, but first they need to get rid of the carpet. It was already midnight, but the mother and son were removing the carpets from each room to make it appear as if they were just redecorating. Under one of the carpets, Norman found a diary with strange drawings of girls. Suddenly there was the sound of a car engine, and the light of the headlights came through the windows. Norma peeked out and saw a police car. She took a deep breath to maintain her composure and went outside, introducing herself and saying that the motel was not yet open. Sheriff Alex Romero and his deputy, Zach Shelby, were just patrolling the area and wanted to make sure everything was okay. Norma reassured them that everything was fine, it was just her and her son were redecorating the motel. Alex Romero found it strange that they were doing renovations at 2 in the morning. Norma said casually that she had just lost track of time. When Romero asked for permission to look around, Norma had no reason to refuse. The police officers entered the premises. There seemed to be nothing suspicious here. Before leaving, Romero was about to use the restroom and entered the very bathroom where lifeless Keith lay. At that moment, Norma and her son were more nervous than they had ever been in their lives. At the same time, they tried to be deliberately casual in their conversation with Zach Shelby, who was much friendlier than his colleague. Fortunately Alex did not notice Keith behind the shower curtain. When the police officers left, Norma and Norman felt an incredible sense of relief. The next day at school, Norman couldn't eat, thinking about what had happened tonight. At one point, he felt nauseous and rushed to the trash can. The classmates joked that he just wasn't used to the food in their school cafeteria yet. A nice girl named Emma Dakota approached Norman and offered him a candy. They take a literature class together. Norman reassured that he was fine. Emma stands out among the others because she wears an oxygen mask and carries a plant with her everywhere. Meanwhile Norma who was walking down the street, saw an announcement that a city forum would soon be held, the topic of which would be the construction of a bypass highway. This is very bad news for Norma. This night the mother and son were going to finish what they had started. They put lifeless Keith in the trunk, drove to the lake and taking a boat, sailed far away from the shore. Norma shared with her son that the city hall plans to build the bypass road. If this happens, no one will stop at their motel. Norma considers herself a bad mother because the son doesn't deserve this. However Norman disagrees. The mother is his family and his only true loved one. They dumped Keith overboard, hoping that the lake would forever conceal their secret. On a rainy morning, the old sign outside Norma's motel was dismantled. In the evening, Norman looked through the diary found in the motel with ominous drawings. He was interrupted by the mother, who had a surprise for him. Looking out the window, Norman saw a new sign. Norma is confident that this is the beginning of their new life. She is also determined to do everything in her power to prevent the city hall from building the bypass. At night, Norman continues to study the diary, feeling that these are not just drawings. Was there a real story behind it? Early in the morning the doorbell rang. Norman hurried to hide the diary. The mother doesn't know that he secretly kept Keith Summer's belt. Opening the door, sleepy Norma saw her elder son Dylan on the doorstep. Neither Norma nor Norman were pleased with his arrival. Norma wants to give Dylan money to get him to leave as soon as possible. Dylan lost his job, so he intends to stay here for a while. He doesn't refer to Norma as mother, not considering her as family. At the bus stop, Norman crossed paths with Bradley and the other girls again. Bradley was actively flirting with Norman and suggested he study for a history test together. At that moment a car passed by, lost control and went into the ditch. Bradley recognized her father's car. They all rushed over. When Norman finally managed to open the door, they saw Bradley's father barely alive. Someone had clearly done this intentionally. The police arrived at the scene immediately. While Shelby was handling everything, Alex Romero told Norma that Jerry Martin was the owner of the warehouse where it looked like someone had started the fire. Dylan joked about how Norma had chosen a very fitting place to start a new life. Among other things, the police found Keith Summers' abandoned pickup truck nearby, who had gone missing a few days ago. Alex Romero asked Norma if she had seen Keith recently. She lied that she hadn't. Ms. Watson assigned paired tasks to the students. Emma immediately suggested that Norman work on the assignment together, and he agreed. After school, Norman went to the hospital to support Bradley. He wanted to give her a flower, but Richard wouldn't let them talk. At night, Dylan was drinking at a bar where he met a crying guy named Ethan. He was upset because a terrible accident had happened to his boss today, someone set fire to his warehouse. He fell into a coma and probably won't survive. The guy offered to pay for Dylan's drinks, who seeing a lot of cash in his wallet, couldn't help but ask about it. Norma didn't like that her elder son came home drunk in the middle of the night. She always put Norman first and considered Dylan a bad son, never hiding it. Dylan doesn't take his mother's words to heart. Right now, he's curious about where she got the money to buy the motel and the house. Norma confessed that she received insurance money for her late husband Sam. In the morning, 
Norma and Norman were thoroughly cleaning the kitchen floor to wipe away all traces. When the doorbell rang, Dylan opened the door. Emma was standing at the doorstep, coming to Norman to work on the literature assignment. Norma asked her many questions, including personal ones. Catching on to what was happening, Norman tried to lead the mother away, but Norma ignored him. Emma explained that her father used to be a professor in Manchester but wanted more time to take care of her, so he moved here and opened a shop. Emma has lung disease and is on the waiting list for a transplant. Without the surgery, she won't live past the age of 27. When Norma and Emma left upstairs, Dylan began to make fun of his mother. Meanwhile, they were selecting poems for their assignment. Unlike other girls, Emma was clearly not interested in partying and boys. Noticing the diary, she took it without permission and opened. Norman said that those weren't his drawings, and he found the diary in one of the motel rooms. Emma wanted to keep him for a while. Norman didn't object. Norma was about to go to sleep when the doorbell rang unexpectedly. The police officers were here to ask her some questions. According to Alex Romero, there is a witness who saw Norma and Keith Summers arguing loudly shortly before Keith's disappearance. Norma didn't deny seeing Keith Summers, but it was a week before his pickup truck was found. Alex Romero understood that she was hiding something and intended to look around her house, but Norma didn't allow it. Without a warrant, the police don't have the right to do so. Before leaving, Romero made it clear to Norma that she should cooperate. Later, Norma found Zach Shelby in town and asked him what they suspected her of. Zach reassured her not to worry, saying it was just Romero's working style. When Zach invited her for a cup of coffee, Norma readily agreed. Norma talked about the loss of her husband and how she wanted to start a new life here with her son. However, Romero's suspicions are very much in the way. Shelby mentioned that Alex Romero and Keith Summers had been childhood friends, so Summers' disappearance was a personal tragedy for Romero. Tonight the annual city festival is supposed to take place, and Shelby told Norma he would be glad to see her there. In the evening, Norma asked the son for advice on what to wear. He strongly disliked her interaction with Shelby, but Norma cannot miss the opportunity to befriend the deputy sheriff. Dylan got involved in illegal business to make money. He immediately gained trust among local dealers. In the evening seeing an offensive word saved as the mother's name in the brother's phone, Norman attacked Dylan who shouted at the younger brother that their mother was a terrible person who ruined his life. However, Norman loves his mother more than anyone else in the world and is ready to stand up for her. When the brother turned away, Norman attempted to attack him again. This time Dylan had to hit him. At the city festival, everyone was having fun. Zach Shelby was in the spotlight. He seems to be popular among the locals. Later they walked together, drank coffee and chatted. Shelby mentioned that Keith Summers was a loser and had made many enemies, so anything could happen to him. Norma expressed the thought that this seemingly quiet town is not what it seems. Shelby hinted that very wealthy people who engage in illegal business live here. The police are aware of this but cannot do anything about it. Norma returned late and immediately went into her son's room. Seeing his bruise, she was horrified. Norman didn't hide the fact that he and Dylan had fought. Both mother and son believe it's best for Dylan to leave. He's not part of their family. Upon receiving a message from Emma asking him to come to her father's store, Norman did just that. Emma asked where he got the bruise. Norman lied that he had fallen down the stairs. It turned out Emma's father is a professional taxidermist. But that's not what this is about. Emma invited Norman because she's convinced the drawings in the diary depict the true story of four girls who illegally came to America from China to work as maids. However they didn't become maids. Their fate was full of cruelty and horrors. Emma believes that finding their graves would be evidence of the authenticity of this story. Norman said it all seemed very eccentric. At that moment, Emma couldn't resist and kissed him. However a second later, she acted as if nothing had happened. Seeing joint photos of the mother and brother in the house, Dylan feels sadness. He doesn't understand why his mother hates him so much. Awakened Norma told her eldest son to leave in the morning. Suddenly, Dylan asked what had happened to Sam. Dylan suspects that Norma took her abusive husband's life for insurance money. Obviously there was hidden blackmail. Norma had no choice but to let Dylan stay. The next day, Emma and Norman went to the forest to find the graves from the drawings. Emma found it difficult to walk long distances due to illness, she started coughing. Instead of graves, the young people found a field with a prohibited plant. When they were noticed they rushed away. Men with guns chased them. Despite her cough, Emma couldn't afford to stop. Fortunately they managed to break away from the pursuit and drove away. On the same day, a terrible incident occurred in the town. Someone left a body engulfed in flames on the main street. Norma witnessed it. Dylan now has a gun. For him this is a chance to get out of poverty and become a tough guy. Norma was very surprised to learn that her eldest son had a job. Of course he refused to go into details. Emma is scared that those people might find them. 
She also confessed to Norman that searching for the grave was just an excuse to spend time with him. Norman didn't want to discuss what happened and advised Emma to forget about it. Considering her obsessed, he took the diary. During class, Norman couldn't concentrate and stared at one point. Miss Watson called him, but he didn't respond. His imagination was drawing dirty things. At one point Norman fainted. He was taken to the hospital and underwent examinations. The doctor told Norma that it could be caused by various health problems, including heart and brain diseases. Of course Norma fears for her son. Dylan and his partner Ethan left their cars near the forest, disguising it. After that, they came to the field where the forbidden plant worth $5 million was growing. Now Dylan is also involved in a legal business, and his duties include guarding the merchandise. For his job, Dylan will be getting $300 a day. He finds it easy money. Norma spent the whole day in the son's ward. They were nervous waiting for the test results. Norma received a call about carpet delivery. Norman convinced her to go because he feels much better. Bradley visited Norman, giving him a flower and apologizing that they hadn't talked last time. But Bradley was really grateful to him for his support. Bradley shared that her father is now in an induced coma. Doctors believe he will not survive. Norman understands her like no one else, as he also lost the father. According to the police, there was an accident in the garage. Alex Romero showed up at the Bates house with a search warrant. Norma hurried back to the clinic and learned that all of Norman's test results were normal. However, the doctor insists that the boy stays here until morning. Norma acted on her own and took her son, telling him about the search at home. Norman immediately became nervous but didn't say anything to his mother yet. At home, Norman first looked under his bed. There was of course no Keith Summers belt. Unable to hold back tears, Norman asked aloud what was wrong with him. After coming downstairs, Norman confessed to his mother that he had kept Keith Summers' belt. Norma doesn't understand why he did it. Norman has no explanations. Now all they can do is wait. Dylan asked Ethan why this business hasn't been shut down yet. Ethan explained that the whole town relies on it. Several families own the business. Jerry Martin, Bradley's father, crossed someone and paid for it. Ethan hinted to Dylan that they have already avenged Jerry. Dylan guessed that they were referring to the incident in town that happened the day before. Hearing unfamiliar sounds, the guys took their guns and went to check what was the matter. But it was just a pheasant. Emma came back to the Bates house again. That diary and the fate of those girls left her mind. Norman is not up for it right now, yet he let Emma enter. Since the diary was found in room 4, Emma assumed that everything happened here. Could Keith Summers, the former owner of the motel, be involved in this? Under the sink, the young people found inscriptions in Chinese, which proves that the diary story is real. Emma photographed the inscription. Norma and Shelby met outside the town, away from prying eyes. Norma subtly tried to inquire if the police found anything in her house. Shelby said he's on duty right now and can't discuss it, but they could meet tonight for dinner at his house. Of course Norma agreed. Before she left, Shelby promised her that everything would be fine. Learning that the mother is going on a date with Shelby, Norman was not pleased. But Norma has no way out. There is no doubt that Shelby knows about the belt. As agreed, Norma came to him at 8 in the evening. She carefully prepared for the date and looked stunning. Shelby offered her a drink and asked her to honestly tell him about the belt. At first Norma tried to feign incomprehension, but Shelby said he wouldn't be able to help her if they weren't honest with each other. Learning that no one except Shelby knows about the belt, Norma felt relieved. Shelby knows that Keith was a bad man and believes that Norma is not guilty of anything. Shelby also knows that Norma is a very strong woman who has fought against circumstances her entire life. But from now on, Shelby will take care of her. Passion arose between them. While roasting the pheasant over the fire, Dylan and Ethan had heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Dylan shared that he's an outcast in the family. Dylan returned home late. Norman couldn't sleep because he was very worried about his mother. Dylan immediately sensed that something was wrong. Norman told him that he was worried about the mother, who was supposed to return several hours ago. The relationship between the brothers is still tense, but despite this, Dylan tried to support Norman. He believes that Norma manipulates her younger son and restricts his freedom. Dylan was surprised that Norman barely remembers the details of their fight. Norman however refuses to believe that he attacked his brother with such fury. Finally, Norma returned home and told her son that Zack took the belt and hid it. It seems he wants to help them. Right now they're relatively safe. Norman doesn't like that his mother is forced to date Shelby because of this situation. However, they have no alternative right now. Norman apologized to his mother, and she hugged him. They cherish each other more than anyone else in the world. At school, Norman approached Bradley, but their conversation was interrupted by Emma, who managed to translate the inscription meaning beautiful. Upon learning that after school Emma intended to go to the police and show the diary found in the motel, Norman reacted very harshly. He made it clear that he didn't want to attract police attention right now and left.
Emma was puzzled. When Norman was lying on the bed at home, the mother entered his room and said that as long as the belt was with Shelby, they were completely at his mercy. Norman knows he must retrieve this belt. But he doesn't know that all this time he was talking to himself. In the middle of the night with a detached look, Norman went to Shelby's house and broke in through the window. He searched everywhere for the belt, rummaging through every room. In the bedside table Norman found a bunch of keys. At that moment, Shelby's dog attacked him. Norman barely managed to escape from the room, locking the animal inside. Using the keys, Norman was able to enter the basement, where he saw another door behind which there was an improvised cell. Seeing an unconscious Chinese girl, Norman approached her and woke up. The girl asked for help. Meanwhile Shelby returned. Norman doesn't know that when he was heading to Shelby's house, Dylan noticed him and followed him. Dylan saw his brother break into the deputy sheriff's house. Of course Dylan couldn't let Shelby catch Norman, who didn't even suspect that the policeman was already home. Only upon hearing Shelby's voice Norman realized he was trapped. Norman was forced to leave the Chinese girl here. Shelby doesn't remember locking his dog in the room, and why would he? Suddenly the doorbell rang. It was Dylan, who wanted to distract the policeman and asked where the nearest gas station was. Shelby doesn't know that Dylan is Norma's other son. The deputy sheriff hastily explained to him which way to go. A few minutes later Dylan saw Norman escape through the window. When Norman returned home, Dylan was already waiting for him and demanded explanations. However, Norman denied being in the policeman's house. Before school, Norman went to the Dakota house and knocked on the door. Emma's father will Dakota said she had caught a cold, and in her case any illness could be fraught. Emma won't be at school for a week. Before Norman left, Will asked him to be decent to Emma, as she's a very fragile girl. Norman said he was decent. Norma's meetings with Zach continue. This time Dylan caught them leaving the motel together. Zach immediately recognized the guy who showed up at his doorstep last night. They pretended not to know each other. Having seen Bradley setting up a small memorial on the road in honor of her father, Norman approached her. The girl was deeply saddened by the loss of her loved one. Norman hugged crying Bradley as a sign of support. Any words were unnecessary. Dylan started buying groceries for the house, now that he had some money. It was unexpected for Norma to hear advice from her elder son to be careful with Shelby. Dylan doesn't trust him. Of course Norma wasn't going to heed her eldest son's words. Returning home in the evening, Norman saw Shelby on the road and quickened his pace, but the deputy sheriff noticed him and followed. Norman did not get away. Zach openly told him how much he treasures Norma. That's why Zach wants to get to know Norman better and invited him fishing. Norman had no option to refuse. Norma is still concerned about the city council's intention to build the bypass road. She was distracted by Norman telling her about the Chinese girl in Shelby's basement. According to Norman, Shelby was involved with Keith Summers in illegal activities. When the mother asked the son why he broke into Shelby's house, Norman reminded her that she asked him too. Norma said she never asked for anything like that. Norman doesn't understand what's going on. The mother explained to him as gently as possible that sometimes he sees and hears things that aren't there. Nevertheless, once again spending the night at Shelby's house, Norma waited for him to fall asleep and check the basement. She was startled by Zach, who approached her from behind. Norma said she just wanted to see his house. Norman doesn't hide his dislike for his mother's frequent meetings with Shelby. He doesn't trust Zach and is certain that there's a sinister secret in his basement. Norma said she was in Zach's basement that night and didn't see anyone. Now Norma wants her son against his wishes, to go fishing with Zach and befriend him. Norman had to do it. Shelby asked if his father was really as cruel as Norma said. The guy was very reluctant to answer the questions. Then Zach reminded that he risks his career and freedom every day defending Norma. All Zach wants in return is trust. Norman said he trusts him. An urgent call to Shelby made them to cut their fishing trip short early. It turned out that fisherman pulled from the bottom of the Lake Keith's watch in his hand. Upon receiving a message from Bradley inviting him to meet and have ice cream, Norman agreed without hesitation. Bradley highly values his support, feeling that he understands her like no one else. When Bradley mentioned that today fisherman found a hand in the lake, Norman immediately understood that it was Keith Summers. At home, he told his mother about it, but she didn't have time to do anything because police officers appeared at their doorstep. Shelby didn't want this, but he had no choice. By order of Alex Romero, Zach brought Norma to the police station. Romero calmly asked Norma to tell the truth about what really happened. Norma continued to deny everything, so Alex said they found carpet fibers in Keith's watch. Norma didn't fall for the provocation, although Alex knew exactly that she did it. Over 20 years of practice, he had learned to understand people. Now Alex just needs to find evidence, those carpets from the motel. Norma lied that she doesn't remember where she dumped it. The mother and son were going to find evidence before the police did. But it was like looking for a needle in a haystack. 
Since the landfill had restricted access, they couldn't just walk in. Norma went into hysterics. The son shouted that it was her fault for not calling the police, although it was self-defense. At that moment, Norma confessed that she didn't defend herself but intentionally took Keith's life. She couldn't bear what he had done to her. The mother and son had to return home with nothing. Norma cried, as did Norman. Right now Dylan is the only one who can listen to him and give advice. Upon learning about what happened, Dylan was shocked. Norman didn't hide any details, telling everything as it was. He's very scared now. Dylan promised to help. When Bradley messaged Norman, Dylan advised him to go to her right away. If Bradley didn't want it, she wouldn't have messaged him in the middle of the night. Despite his lack of confidence, Norman followed the brother's advice and went straight to Bradley's house. She immediately suggested going to her room. This was new for Norman. Bradley took his hand, saying she was tired of being sad. Passion sparked between them. Meanwhile Norma woke up. Not finding her son in his room, she became worried. But Dylan reassured her, saying that Norman was out with a girl. Dylan also made it clear that he knows the truth. Norma screamed that she hates him and attacked him. There was a knock on the door. Norma thought it was Norman, but it was Alex Romero who came to arrest her. Shelby couldn't help her beloved in any way. In the morning, Norman left while Bradley was still sleeping. For the first time since moving here, he felt genuinely happy. But this joy was overshadowed by the news of his mother's arrest. The brothers visited her at the first opportunity. Norma barely holds herself together. The bail is $100,000, but she doesn't have that kind of money. Dylan suggests mortgaging the motel, but Norma still hopes that everything will somehow work out on its own. She chased her sons away, unwilling to accept their help. At home, Norman was rummaging through documents. Emma came, wanting to support him. Norman was surprised that everyone in town already knows about his mother's arrest. Emma offered Norman to stay with her and her father, but he refused, saying he would stay with his brother. Finally Norman found what he was looking for, the motel papers. This will allow him to post bail. Dylan shared with Ethan that he is looking for a place to live with his brother. But for this, he needs at least $5,000. Shelby brought food to Norma in the cell, but she has no appetite right now. Emma drove Norman to the organization he needed. He was sincerely grateful to her. While they waited, Norman confessed that he had seen the Chinese girl from the diary, and she was in the basement of Deputy Shelby's house. Emma believes they should immediately go to the authorities, but Norman cannot do that until he helps his mother. Before leaving, Emma asked Norman if it was true that his mother had taken the life of Keith Summers, whom many wished ill. Norman said it wasn't true. At home, he wrote another message to Bradley, but she didn't reply. However there is good news, bail has been posted for Norma, and she will be released tomorrow at 9 in the morning. Norman met his mother with a bouquet of flowers. Norma was clearly not in the mood for sentimentality and remained cold. The mother and son consulted with a lawyer. Rebecca Craig tried to come up with a defense strategy for the client, but Norma said she didn't need it because she was innocent. Later, Norman told his mother that she was being reckless and it wouldn't help her. Norma is angry at the son for leaving her alone on the night before the arrest when she was crying, to be with some girl. She's also upset because her son revealed their secret to Dylan. Norman admitted he was just scared. The mother scares him with her erratic behavior. Upon hearing this in a fit of anger, Norma dropped her son off on the road, even though they were still several miles from home. It was their first major argument. Norman had to walk. Dylan happened to drive by on his motorcycle and stopped, offering to give Norman a ride. At home, the brothers had a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Dylan shared that he was going to move out soon and wants the brother to live with him, even if Norma doesn't go to prison. It would be better for him. However, Norman cannot abandon his mother. When Dylan and Ethan were once again preparing to go to the field, Ethan gave him 5,000 in cash. Dylan didn't expect this at all. However, Ethan who sincerely wanted to help, knows for sure that Dylan can be trusted and that he will repay the debt someday. A minute later, a certain guy with whom Ethan had conflicts approached their car and shot. Dylan tried to help his friend and urgently drove him to the hospital. Wounded Ethan was taken to the operating room. Seeing a policeman, Dylan hurried to leave. At night, Norma met with Shelby and asked him what he wanted. Shelby said he was very sorry, but he was just doing his job. They shouldn't see each other for a while. Upon hearing this, Norma got out of the car and was about to leave, but Shelby stopped her and confessed his love to her. For him, the arrest of his beloved was a real hell. Now everything Shelby does is for Norma's sake. He promised to come up with something. Arriving at the police station, Shelby asked the secretary to bring clean forms. Taking advantage of this, he deactivated the surveillance camera, sneaked into the evidence room and stole fibers from the carpet, then turned the surveillance camera back on. Upon returning, the secretary didn't suspect anything. Meanwhile, Dylan was trying to come to his senses after what had happened. Seeing on the street the guy who was shooting, 
Dylan without much thought went straight for him. The guy tried to run away but couldn't get far. That's how Dylan avenged Ethan. Emma couldn't get the last conversation with Norman out of her head, so she searched for information on the internet. Norma's hopes for a fresh start in life with her son were dashed, but a phone call from Rebecca Craig changed everything. It turned out that the police had lost the main evidence, fibers from the carpet. And without that, there would be no trial. Norman tried calling Bradley again but it went to voicemail. Clearly she was avoiding him. Norma shared some good news with her son. They hugged. Norma is convinced it's not a coincidence but Zach's doing. Of course Norman was to put it mildly not thrilled about it. He met with Emma, who claimed to know where the Chinese girl might be. But now Norman is only concerned about Bradley's silence. Emma noticed that Norman wasn't listening to her at all and was constantly looking at his phone. Norman admitted that he was now dating Bradley. It hurt Emma to hear that, but at the same time she's sure Norman misunderstood Bradley, and that night didn't mean anything. However, Norman believes it's serious between them. Emma took it stoically and finished the thought, perhaps that Chinese girl is hidden in Keith Summer's boat. It would be the perfect place for Shelby to hide someone. That same evening, the teenagers sneaked onto late Keith Summer's boat. Emma broke the lock. Inside they indeed found the Chinese girl, the same one Norman had seen earlier at Shelby's house. Emma was right. The teenagers decided to temporarily move the girl, who kept losing consciousness, to the motel. Seeing Emma's car parked near the motel, Norma went to check what was happening. Entering the room, she demanded explanations from her son. Norman said this was the same girl from Shelby's house. Norma didn't want to believe it. Speaking broken English, the girl confirmed that someone had been holding her. It was hard for Norma to comprehend. She didn't want to believe Zach capable of such things and showed her his picture from the newspaper. The girl in tears said it was him. Norma's world collapsed once again. Could Zach not be as good as he pretends to be? Norman tried to talk to his mother, but she didn't respond to anything. While Norman and Emma pondered what to do, Norma ran to her car. The son ran after her, trying to stop her. Norma was determined to go to Zach and talk to him right away. Norman had to jump into the car and grab the wheel to prevent his mother from leaving. Just to be safe, he threw away the keys. Norma finally calmed down a bit. She couldn't understand why there were so many bad people in her life. The son promised they would find a way to hold Zach accountable, but they couldn't act recklessly. Dylan called his boss Gil, and in a personal meeting told him what happened to Ethan. By the way Ethan didn't survive. Gil turned gloomy. Now all he wants is revenge. That's when Dylan had to confess that he already took revenge. Gil highly valued Dylan's loyalty and explained how to properly dispose of Ethan's pickup truck to avoid any evidence. Dylan did exactly as instructed. Now Dylan has a new partner, Ramo, who has been working for Gil for 23 years. Dylan is much younger, only 21, but he will be the one in charge. Norma is taking care of Zhao, the Chinese girl who is still unconscious. Emma believes they should go to the police. Norma suggested doing it later when the girl regains her strength. As mother and son walked Emma to her car, Norma suggested calling her mother. Emma said she hasn't seen the mother for about eight years. She didn't want to take care of the sick daughter and left. The father is the only person close to Emma. Emma left, and Norma told her son that they won't go to the police until they find the belt. In the evening Norma applied makeup, preparing to meet Shelby. When he falls asleep, she intends to find the belt. Norma also regrets not believing her son from the beginning. Their conversation was interrupted by Dylan, who told the mother to stay here and wait for them. The brothers went to the boat. On the way, Dylan mentioned that he already paid for the house, so they'll be able to move there soon and live away from Norma. However, Norman isn't sure if he's ready to leave his mother. Together the brothers searched the boat for the belt. At one point, Dylan asked the brother how his father perished. Norman replied that it was an accident. Dylan bluntly said that Norma had done it. She was unhappy in the marriage and decided to get rid of her husband for insurance money. Norman refuses to acknowledge it, finding all sorts of justifications for both his mother and his cruel father. Dylan just wants the brother to stop being blind. Finally they found what they were looking for. Meanwhile, Shelby arrived at Norma's, saying he couldn't wait any longer. Norma had to pretend she was glad to see him. They went to the motel to indulge in passion. The brothers threw the belt into the lake, where no one will ever find it. Now Norma is safe. Norman thanked Dylan who planned to move today. Suddenly Shelby heard water running and suspected that someone else was in the motel. Zack went to check, Norma followed him, fearing he would see the Chinese girl. When Zack knocked on the room and demanded to open the door, Norma lied about letting one of the painters sleep here. Zack realized she was lying. At that moment Zhao opened the door and seeing Shelby, rushed out. Norma tried to stop Zack, but he pushed her and ran after the Chinese girl. Norman and Dylan arrived. The eldest son stated to the mother that from now on, his brother would live with him. In a state of shock, Norma said Shelby was here. 
but now she is more concerned about the younger son's intention to leave her. She doesn't understand why he's doing this to her. Norman directly asked the mother if she took his father's life. Norma denied it. Their conversation was interrupted by Zack, who held a gun. Knowing who Dylan works for, Zack ordered him to put his gun on the ground. In the house they had an honest conversation. Norma tried to convince Zack that they wouldn't tell anyone anything, but he couldn't trust them. If Norman hadn't poked his nose where it didn't belong, this wouldn't have happened. Zack wanted to silence him forever but couldn't. Norma continued to beg him to let them go, promising they would keep quiet. Unable to stand it, Norman attacked Zack who dropped his gun. Quickly realizing, Dylan grabbed the gun. A shootout began between him and Shelby, while Norma tried to bring Norman back to consciousness. Zack and Dylan wounded each other. Zack's wound turned out to be much more serious, he couldn't stand up. However Dylan ran out of bullets. Managing to stand up, Zack searched the house for Dylan, while Norma dragged unconscious Norman outside and called the police. Norman woke up. While Dylan was reloading his gun, Norma took the youngest son to the car. He doesn't remember what happened. At that moment, Norma realized she had forgotten the car keys in the room. Several shots were heard in the house. Norma and Norman waited with bated breath to see who would come out of the house, Dylan or Zack. Their worst fears were confirmed, wounded Zack appeared, preparing to shoot but not in time, having lost consciousness. Dylan ran up. Seeing the eldest son, Norma rushed into his arms. She was genuinely grateful to him. Norman was still in a detached state. Now they have to figure out what to tell the police. Dylan wants Norma to stop pretending and tell the whole truth. Obviously there are many things that mother hides from Dylan. Norma revealed what happened on the day of Sam's demise, Norman's father. The spouses quarreled once again over money. Of course Norman heard this. Such things happen not for the first time. When Sam lost his temper, Norman took a heavy object, approached him from behind and took his life. At that time, Norman was not himself and did not react to anything. To protect her son, Norma had to drag Sam into the garage and make it look like an accident. When Norman woke up, he remembered nothing of what had happened. Seeing her lifeless husband and her son crying, Norma tried to figure out how to behave. She no longer had the strength for strong emotions. It was unexpected for Dylan to find out. Norma doesn't have an answer to what's happening with Norman. She's the only one who can defend him. And Dylan has two options, either not to interfere with her or to help. At the scene, Alex Romero arrived personally. Dylan handed over his gun without resistance. Seeing Shelby lifeless, Romero intended to talk to all the participants of this story. Norma told him that it was Zach Shelby who was involved in the demise of Keith Summers. Alex Romero found this version plausible because he had long suspected Shelby's involvement in illegal activities. Moreover shortly before the disappearance, Zach and Keith had a conflict. Romero is going to take responsibility for Shelby's demise, so Dylan remains free of suspicion. It should all look as if Shelby was going to hide the Chinese girl on the Bates property, and Romero thwarted his plans. For Norma and her sons, the worst was over. Seeing the mother embracing Norman, Dylan who had risked his life for them, felt conflicting emotions. Norman misses Bradley a lot, whom he hasn't seen since that night. Norma is only concerned now that there are only seven days left until the motel opens. They need to accomplish a lot in that time. Unlike his mother, Norman cannot yet recover from what happened. The mother said they should live their lives to the fullest and trust Sheriff Romero. At the mother's request, Norman was fixing the lattice under the terrace before school. Inside he saw a stray dog. Dylan was surprised when the mother made breakfast for him. She just wanted to express her gratitude for what he had done. Dylan said he was going to move out anyway. If before Norma didn't want to see her eldest son, now she needs his support more than ever. Therefore she was not happy about the news. When Dylan was taking out the trash, a black Cadillac stopped near him. A suspicious man asked if the motel really had new owners and where to find Keith Summers. Dylan replied that Keith Summers was dead. At school Norman saw Bradley, who acted as if nothing had happened between them. However, Norman still believes they are dating. Meanwhile, Norma is trying to negotiate with other entrepreneurs to promote her motel, but no one wants to deal with it. Everyone in town knows what happened at the Bates house. Gossip tainted the place. Not a single person has booked a room at the motel yet. Norma's business could fail even before its launch. That same evening, Norma saw a suspicious man near one of the rooms and went out to ask what was going on. The man who introduced himself as Jake Abernathy, explained that he has a standing reservation for the ninth room every two months. Norma said the motel has new ownership, and they haven't opened yet. But for a regular customer, she is willing to make an exception if he doesn't mind the unfinished renovation. This didn't bother the man at all. After receiving the keys, he went to the ninth room. Dylan returning home late, saw the Cadillac parked near the motel and told Norma that he saw this man earlier in the day. Dylan immediately realized that something was amiss and knocked on the ninth room, 
asking the guest to provide all personal information. Jake reluctantly provided his driver's license. When asked about his occupation, Jake evasively replied that he's in sales. He did not use a credit card, but paid in cash. Norma feverishly tried to wipe away the traces on the porch reminiscent of Shelby's demise at that spot. Dylan said that it doesn't come off the porous stone and advised the mother to stop thinking about it. However Norma couldn't stop. If her business fails, the whole town will ridicule her. Dylan repeated that trying to wipe it off was pointless and threw the money on the porch. The next day Norman told Dylan that he would stay home with the mother. Seeing Bradley nearby, Norman couldn't take his eyes off her. Bradley approached him to say hello. She also asked Dylan if he works for Gil. Upon learning that Bradley's father was Jerry Martin, Dylan expressed his condolences. With just the usual friendliness, Bradley left to get her takeout food. Later in the car, Dylan asked his brother if Bradley had texted him that very night. Dylan understood that Norman didn't stand a chance, but kept silent about it. At night, Norma couldn't sleep. Suddenly there were some sounds in the house. The first thing Norma did was enter the son's room to make sure he was okay. The creaking sound came again. Descending downstairs, Norma went into the kitchen. The slam of the back door made her wince. Just in case Norma took a sharp object. It seems like someone is here, or is it just a draft? In the morning, Emma noticed a bowl of dog food on the Bates porch. Norma who knew nothing about the dog, opened the door. Norman refused to come downstairs and asked his mother to tell Emma that he was sick. Norman wasn't in the mood for Emma right now because all his thoughts were occupied by Bradley. Of course Emma guessed that Norman wasn't sick, he just didn't want to see her. She couldn't hold back her tears. Norma who has a sincere sympathy for Emma, out of pity suggested going together to town to buy curtains for the motel. On the way, Norma told Emma not to get upset because Norman is just going through a rough patch right now. When Norma casually asked what her son could be so preoccupied with, Emma said it had to do with Bradley, the most popular girl in school. Norma doesn't think it can be that serious because they're just teenagers. However seeing Bradley who was in town for a yoga class at the time, Norma felt intense jealousy. She absolutely doesn't want her son to associate with this girl. Contrary to the mother's prohibition, Norman continues to feed the dog. He even gave it a name, Juna. Seeing this, Norma who was already irritated, told her son to stop. In the evening when mother and son were washing dishes together, Norman asked for permission to keep the dog, as he had always dreamed of having a pet. Norma relented, but on the condition that her son would take care of the dog himself. Norma also asked her son for a serious conversation. Trying to be as gentle as possible, she explained that no decent 17-year-old girl would behave like Bradley. That's why Bradley is not the one he should be associating with. However, Norman considers her perfect, and he doesn't care what his mother thinks about it. It was an unpleasant surprise for Norman to learn that his mother hired Emma to work at the motel a few days a week. Norman thought the mother was trying to set him up with Emma, thinking he wasn't good enough for Bradley. As a result mother and son argued, and Norman left home. Gathering his courage, he knocked on Bradley's door and confessed his sincere feelings to her. However looking confused, Bradley admitted that she doesn't feel the same way. Moreover, Bradley regrets that night. Unable to contain his emotions, Norman left. Bradley hurriedly grabbed her jacket and ran after him. Norman kept walking, talking to himself and quoting his mother. Catching up to Norman, Bradley hugged him and said how sorry she was. Norman couldn't say anything good to her. Jake Abernathy approached Norma and said that he works with many people in the area and could put in a good word for her. In return Jake asks for a favor, to reserve all the rooms for a week every other month. Norma gladly agreed to this strange condition, as it was good money. Norman was coming home upset. Seeing the dog on the opposite side of the road, he called it over. At that moment a car drove by, the driver didn't manage to break in time. Seeing this, Norma ran onto the road. Norman yelled that it was his fault. Now the guy intends to take the carcass to Emma's father, who practices taxidermy. Norma considered it madness but couldn't allow the son to go alone. Norman confessed to her that he was wrong about Bradley. Will Dakota is an expert in taxidermy, recreating the art of motion in immobile objects. Norman finds it fascinating, so he eagerly agrees to Mr. Dakota's offer to learn. At school, Emma felt unwell and locked herself in a stall. At one point, she overheard girls gossiping about Norman and Bradley. They were sure there was nothing between them because Bradley would never date someone like Norman. Coming out of the stall, Emma advised the girls to sort out the facts before jumping to conclusions and mixing someone with dirt because there really was something between Bradley and Norman. Norma is very concerned about the fact that the city hall is planning to build the bypass road. She's also a little freaked out by Jake Abernathy. Norma called the police station, but Sheriff Romero wasn't available. Dylan received a call from Gil, who instructed him and Ramo to go to California tomorrow and meet the so-called trimmers. Dylan doesn't yet know what trimmers are, and Ramo refused to explain. 
At school, Bradley approached Norman and asked why he told Emma about that night, who in turn blabbed it to everyone else. Bradley wants Norman to forget about what happened between them because she has a boyfriend. Miss Watson witnessed the teenage conflict and followed Norman out onto the street, asking why he was leaving in the middle of classes. Norman reacted aggressively. The teacher was taken aback, as he was usually a quiet boy. Norma came to room 9 to clean up. Jake Abernathy asked if Zach Shelby really perished on the steps of their house. Norma had no reason to deny it. Jake said he had known Shelby and Keith Summers for many years but never thought they were using the motel as an illegal brothel. Norma began to get nervous and hurried to leave. Jake was clearly hiding something. Later, Norma went to the police station and met with Alex Romero, expressing her concern about the bypass road. Norma knows there is one vacant seat on the city planning committee, and she wants Romero to recommend her candidacy. Perhaps Norma can influence their decision. Romero indicated that what happened doesn't make them friends and that they don't owe anything to each other. He has enough power to destroy Norma if he wants to. While leaving, Norma received a call from the school principal, who invited her to discuss Norman's behavior. Dylan and Ramo were getting ready to leave. Dylan had already found information online about what trimmers are. They are people who harvest crops. Norman went to Mr. Dakota's store and asked Emma why she told everyone at school and his mother about him and Bradley. Emma said she just couldn't hold it in. Norman asked her not to tell anyone his secrets from now on. The school principal and Miss Watson are concerned about Norman's unstable behavior, so they insist on a psychologist. As a punishment, Norman was suspended from classes for three days. Norma promised to find a private specialist for her son and hurried to leave. At night, Dylan and Ramo were drinking at a roadside bar. Ramo, who has been working for the boss for 23 years, doesn't hide his dissatisfaction. Ramo feels it's unfair that he now has to run errands for a young guy. Dylan called him a pathetic loser, for which he received a punch. A fight broke out between them, during which they smashed several tables and chairs in the bar. However, the guys managed to stop in time. Later, Ramo told Dylan that he lacks leadership qualities, so nobody respects him. He also mentioned that Gil is not the main boss. When the time comes, Dylan will find out everything. Norman apologized to his mother for what happened at school. He promised to keep himself under control. Learning that Emma's father is teaching Norman taxidermy, Norma was to say the least surprised. Driving her son to Mr. Dakota's store, Norma asked him for a private conversation and directly stated that she disapproves of this activity. However, Mr. Dakota sees nothing wrong with it because when Norman is engaged in taxidermy, he is very calm. This morning Dylan and Ramo met with the trimmers. Will told Norman about his unhappy marriage. Despite everything, Will is happy because he has a daughter. Late in the evening, Norma saw Jake leaving somewhere. She followed him, which led her to the pier. Jake walked into one of the boats. Does he also have something to do with what Shelby and Keith Summers were involved in? At some point, Jake realized that someone was spying on him. Norma tried to leave unnoticed, but Jake blocked her path with his car and asked where they hid what he's looking for. Jake also hinted that he knows about her affair with Shelby and everything else. Keith Summers was just a pawn, and Jake is at the top. Norma fled, and Jake shouted after her to come to his room when she refreshes her memory. The next day, Norma took her son to the psychologist. Dr. Fumhiro Karata asked the guy about the loss of his father. Norman replied that he was very sad. One of the trimmers started to act swaggering, so Dylan ordered Ramo to stop and taking out his gun, forced the guy with the guitar out of the car. Dylan showed who was in charge here and that there was no democracy here. Ramo was impressed. In the end they left the guy right on the roadside and drove on. The therapy session came to an end. Norma hoped they wouldn't see this doctor again, but the therapist asking Norma for a private conversation, said it would be better if Norman came alone next time. It's obvious that Norma has a strong influence on her son. She could use therapy herself. Hearing this, Norma yelled at the doctor and took her son away. Then she went to room number 9, returned Jake his money and told him to get out. From now on, Norma wants nothing to do with this man. Jake said she would regret her decision very much. Norma watched from the window as he left the motel. Norman was proud of his work, it was the first stuffed animal he had made. It was in memory of Juna. Emma told Norman that she only told the girls about him and Bradley because they were speaking badly about him. She didn't have any other motives. Emma really likes Norman but she has accepted that they won't be together. He is precious to her as a friend. The teenagers hugged as a sign of reconciliation. Will saw it. Dylan arrived and asked why room 9 was vacant. Norma replied that he was right about Jake, so she kicked him out. When Dylan said that seven people need to check into a motel, Norma was very happy. She suggested that her eldest son have dinner in town together tonight. Dylan agreed. It seems their relationship is improving. Norma went into the room to change and saw Shelby on her bed. Screaming, Norma ran away. 
The police arrived and took the body away. The so-called trimmers were watching this. Norma told Sheriff Romero how it all happened. It was truly horrifying. Norma is sure that Jake Abernathy is behind this. The brothers threw away Norma's mattress. She also threw away the pillow. Sensing a strange smell, Norma approached the trimmers and told them not to smoke anything illegal here anymore. They didn't understand her complaints because the whole local business is built on it. Norma made it clear that her rules apply to her property. Dylan explained to his mother that these people are workers processing crops. Norma in turn said she hates this place and that moving here was the worst decision of her life. That's why Norma intends to sell the motel and the house. Norman has nightmares about harming Bradley. It's hard for him to accept that she doesn't want to be with him. Emma came to the motel before school to sort something out. Norma said it wasn't necessary. The delivery person brought Norma a bouquet of flowers with a see you soon note attached. Norma immediately called the sheriff's office, but Romero was not available. Norma is convinced that the bouquet is from Jake Abernathy. In town, Dylan was approached by Bradley and asked if he could walk her to the father's office, which was in Gill's building. Bradley just wants to get his belongings. Dylan couldn't resist her charm. Norma went to the realtor and began to resent him for not mentioning the city department's plans to build a bypass when she bought the motel. Norma made it clear that if he doesn't return the money, she will take legal action. Norma also stated her intention to put the motel up for sale. At school, Miss Watson approached Norman and said his essay was amazing. Miss Watson has a friend who owns a small publication that could print the story. Norma was cleaning the rooms. At some point she saw Jake's Cadillac driving by. There is no doubt he will fulfill his promise and turn her life into hell. Norma wants to move as soon as possible. When Norman came, the mother told him to lock all the doors. Norman brought the stuffed dog home. He also told the mother about his successes at school. Norman would like to stay here, but his mother has completely different plans. Dylan considered his brother's hobby sinister. Norman shared that he is worried about the upcoming move. Norman also confided that he is haunted by fantasies of harming Bradley. Dylan was alarmed by this. The trimmers were processing the harvest. Dylan asked Gil casually if Jerry Martin had an office here. Gil doesn't like to recall Jerry because his antics cost him a lot of money. Gil thought Dylan wanted Jerry's office and said he had no objection. Emma saw one of the guests smoking. As Norma instructed, Emma tried to stop this misconduct. Surprisingly the guy was polite and promised it wouldn't happen again. He obviously liked Emma. After classes, Norman and Miss Watson edited his story. The teacher is impressed by Norman's writing talent and considers him wise beyond his years. Norman noticed that at that moment Miss Watson seemed pensive. But what is troubling her? In the evening despite Norma's ban, the guests were smoking what they shouldn't. Sheriff Romero arrived and asked where they all work. They replied that they work at Gill's warehouse. Romero is here because he received a message from Norma about the bouquet. The sheriff promised to talk to the florist, but it's unlikely to yield anything because officially there is no Jake Abernathy. All his documents turned out to be fake. Norma is very frightened. Romero plainly stated that he currently has no grounds to detain the man because there is no real evidence against him. So far the police are powerless to do anything, which makes Norma very angry. Norman couldn't bear to see Bradley at school and realize that they would never be together. Emma saw on the reception desk a pastry from that guy, Gunner, and a note of apology. In the evening, Dylan met Bradley at a cafe and said it would be better if he simply handed her Jake's things. Gil would be unhappy if he found out about an intruder at the facility. Barely holding back tears, Bradley said it was important for her to see the place where her father often visited one last time. Her mother was so scared that she threw away all his things, and there were no reminders of him left in the house. Bradley misses her father very much. This made Dylan agree. Gunner continues to flirt with Emma, which is new for her. Emma decided to eat the cupcake he gave her. Norma told her son that she found a wonderful cottage in Hawaii at an affordable price. However, Norman doesn't want to move and stated that he will stay here anyway. Norman is tired of the mother's constant attempts to start over. It's pointless because ultimately nothing changes. Emma started acting weird. It's because of the secret ingredient in the cupcake. Norma told her son to make toast and pour orange juice. Dylan led Bradley into the facility. Thinking someone wanted to steal the merchandise, Ramo started shooting. Dylan shouted that it was him. Seeing Jerry Martin's daughter, Ramo called Dylan an idiot. Gil really disliked Jerry Martin, and if he finds out that his daughter was here, it will end badly. Dylan promised they would leave in 10 minutes. Seeing the father's belongings, Bradley couldn't hold back her emotions. Among other things, there were love letters from a certain woman addressed to Jerry Martin. Realizing that her father was unfaithful to her mother, Bradley was on the verge of hysteria and ran out. Dylan hugged her in support. Norma was still afraid to sleep in her room, so she stayed at Norman's. It was just like when he was little. Norma and Norman had been through a lot, 
but there were also good moments in their lives. Norma said she was sorry about the move. However, Norman had already come to terms with it. The next day, he told Miss Watson that he changed his mind about publishing the story. His mother obviously wouldn't like it. Miss Watson suggested doing it secretly from Norma because such talent shouldn't go to waste. Miss Watson had also experienced many unpleasant things in life, so she knew what Norman was going through. The realtor told Norma that he wouldn't return her money and that there were no buyers for the motel. It was a hopeless situation. Norma was furious. There was no point in suing the realtor because he was $30,000 in debt and had no property. Once again Norma failed. When she got into her car, she was grabbed by the man who called himself Jake Abernathy and asked if she liked his gift. It turned out that Shelby owed Jake $150,000, and for some reason, Jake is convinced that Norma has the money now. He said that if he doesn't get the money by midnight tomorrow, her sons will suffer. First Norma went to the police station and told Sheriff Romero about what happened. Of course Norma knows nothing about the money. Alex Romero promised to look into it, assuring Norma that neither she nor her sons are in danger. She just has to trust him. The annual winter ball will soon take place at the school. Emma is sad because no one has ever invited her to a ball. Norman said he would like to go with her. Emma knows he offered out of pity, but she was still very grateful to him. Norma told Dylan that she needs a gun. Of course Dylan turned her down and asked her why she needed it. Norma had to tell the eldest son the truth. She doesn't trust Sheriff Romero and wants to somehow protect herself. However, Dylan didn't change his mind, believing that Norma and a gun are a dangerous combination. No one knows that the $150,000 are actually stored with Sheriff Romero. Norma's nerves are slowly giving in. To calm down at least a little, she went to a therapy session with Dr. Karata. Last time Norma yelled at him, but now she needs to vent and get advice on how to cope with stress. Dr. Karata asked her various questions, including about her childhood. According to Norma, her father was very kind, and her mother worked in a bakery. Norma remembers how the scent of baking always surrounded her. Norma's parents passed away a long time ago. She doesn't have any brothers or sisters. At one point, Norma felt unwell and ended the session. Norman overheard Miss Watson arguing on the phone with her boyfriend Eric, who was stalking her. Seeing Norman, the teacher felt embarrassed. He lied that he hadn't heard anything. Norman also said that he didn't want to publish his story after all, and it's not because of his mother. Miss Watson knows that Norman heard everything and asked him not to tell anyone about it. Now they have a shared secret. Alex visited Maggie, Keith's sister who leads an immoral lifestyle. She was doing the bookkeeping at her brother's motel. Seeing her bruises, Alex guessed that Jake, another alias being Joff already did it. He thought she had the money, but Maggie doesn't have it. All she knows is that Joff is in the same business in four different ports. Alex advised her to keep quiet and not to be afraid anymore. Emma told Norma that she's going to the winter ball with Norman tonight. For the occasion, Emma bought a beautiful dress. Dylan eventually changed his mind and gave his mother the gun. He asks for just one thing, not to make him regret it. Dylan taught his mother how to shoot. Norma asked the eldest son about his job. Dylan told her the truth. Of course Norma didn't like it, but 22-year-old Dylan doesn't want anyone to judge him, especially his mother. For the first time in many years, Dylan called Norma mom. He also advised her to trust Romero because apparently, he's the man in charge in town. It's definitely better not to mess with that guy. Maggie Summers came to Norma and said that if the person they know as Jake Abernathy doesn't get what he wants, he won't stop at anything. He's a very dangerous man. Norman didn't expect to see Bradley on their doorstep at all. She said she came for Dylan. He handed her the father's things. Norman said he was going to do homework, but in reality, he was eavesdropping on his brother and Bradley, feeling anger and jealousy. It's clear that the girl likes Dylan. Norma can't eat or drink, constantly thinking about the danger that threatens them. Meanwhile, Norman who was getting ready for the ball, was very irritated and took out his anger on family members. Dylan realized it had to do with Bradley and told his brother that there's nothing between him and Bradley. Norman replied that he didn't care. Emma should be arriving any minute now. Norma has decided to tell her son something she's never told anyone before. Norma wants someone to know the truth about her. Earlier, Norma lied to the therapist about not having a brother or sister. In reality she does have a brother who made her do wrong things. Norma couldn't tell anyone about it because her mother was indifferent, and her father was aggressive. Listening to this, Norman couldn't contain his emotions, much like Norma. Obviously she didn't get those scars from hot chocolate. Norman hugged the crying mother, saying how sorry he was. It was a long time ago, but Norma couldn't keep it inside anymore. The doorbell rang. Emma looked great in her dress, but Norman didn't care about that now. Before leaving, he hugged his mother once more. Norma is confident that her son will be safer at school now than at home. Suddenly Norma received a call from Joffa Reddy, who wanted to make sure she hadn't forgotten about their midnight meeting. At the ball, 
Emma and Norman felt uncomfortable because it was their first time at such an event. Norman couldn't take his eyes off Bradley, who was here with her boyfriend. Taking the gun and stuffing the bag with clothes as if it was money, Norma was preparing to meet Joff already. Emma and Norman were dancing slowly. Norman can't stop looking at Bradley and Richard noticed it, as did Emma. She was very upset and left the ball, asking Norman not to follow her. Richard took Norman outside and said never to go near Bradley again. Richard knows about what happened between Bradley and Norman and believes Norman took advantage of the situation. When Norman said that Bradley invited him over that night herself, he got punched. Norman was walking home in the rain. Miss Watson stopped by in her car and offered him a ride. Seeing a bruise on Norman, she took him not to his home but to hers to treat the wound. Meanwhile, Norma arrived at the pier where she was supposed to meet Joff already. Hearing an approaching car, Norma hid and saw Alex Romero with a bag. Could he be involved in all this too? Soon Joff already arrived. Norma watched as Alex handed money to Joff. Alex also made it clear to Joff that this was his town and if anyone wants to do business here, they should do it through him. Alex wants 50%. That's more than Joff was paying Shelby and Keith, but they were idiots. Joff agreed to the terms, but when he leaned down to pick up the bag, Alex pulled out his gun and shot. Lifeless Joff fell into the water. Alex also tossed the money. He knew Norma had been watching him all this time and told her to go home and trust him from now on. Miss Watson treated Norman's wound and asked him not to tell anyone he had been here. She's clearly taking an interest in him. When Miss Watson went to her room, she didn't close the door, giving Norman the opportunity to watch her. At that moment, Norman heard the mother's voice in his head, saying no normal woman would act like this. Miss Watson clearly left the door unlocked on purpose. That's why Norman must make her regret it. Unable to bear it, Norman fled. Outside the motel, the mother saw him as she was returning. Norman admitted he doesn't remember anything after leaving the winter ball. Norma promised that everything will be fine from now on. All the bad things are over. However, neither mother nor son knows that Miss Watson was lying lifeless on the floor of her house at that moment. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.